Hello, everybody. Welcome to Live at Five. It is Wednesday, June 19th. I'm Beth Stevens. And I'm Paul Wontorek. And we are here in the studio with Caitlin Moynihan. Hello. And her jazz hands. And we have a very exciting guest we today. We do. Olivia Valley, with an I, is here from Jersey Boys. She's here uh, what an interesting name to be in Jersey Boys. <laughs> we'll get to that. <laughs> but first, our top five. Hip-hop improv group is making its way to Broadway. Yes, it's yes. been an interesting path for Freestyle Love Supreme. Supreme, I love their which name. Which I'm trying to remember when I first heard about it. I guess it was In the Heights, was right? When In the Heights was first happening. We That's knew a that long time ago. Lin-Manuel Miranda was a part of this amazing group, and uh, it's coming to Broadway. So let's see, they had an off-Broadway run, right? And now it will play at the Booth Theater starting September 13th. Uh, with October 2nd as the opening night, and it's a limited run through January 5th, 2020. Freestyle Love Supreme is conceived by Lin-Manuel Miranda, directed by Tommy Kale and Anthony Veneziale. Hope I said that right. Uh, and this, what, what is it? So it's like six performers, uh, let me see how they describe it. Yes, Providing nonstop action throughout a fast-paced evening, spinning cues from the audience into humorous bits, instantaneous songs, which we know Lin is very good at, That's a and fully realized part. musical numbers. It will feature... Love these nicknames. I'm not skipping this. Andrew Bancroft, a.k.a. Jelly Donut. Arthur Lewis, a.k.a. Arthur the Geniuses, plural. Bill Sherman, a.k.a. King Sherman. Chris Sullivan, a.k.a. Shockwave. <laughs> Anthony Veneziale, the co-director, mm -hmm. a.k.a. Two Touch. And Utkarsh Ambut Ambudkar, a.k.a. Mm -hmm. UTK? UTK. A.k.a. UTK. Yeah, love it. Anyway, also, we all need special nicknames, by the way. guest stars. We need to work on that. Special guest stars. Lin-Manuel Miranda. This, they're going to come and go. And you're Christopher not going to know Jackson, when. Christopher Jackson, David Diggs, James Monroe, Iglehart. These are all legendary members of the group, along with Wayne Brady, Ashley Perez, Flanagan, and many more. Wow. Also, this is yes. the first Broadway show where that you're going, you will have to check your cell phone on the way in. That's correct. Mm -hmm. You so, don't check it. You put it, you lock it, and you bring it lock with it you. Lock it up. You lock it up. No, no bootlegs. No people. freestyle. Mm. No freestyle. Live videos. Nope. <laughs> performances. <laughs> anyway, uh, that's a fun new show for the fall that we didn't know was coming, but it's going to be great. And we found out who else we're going to be loving like a table. Oh, uh, we have Todrick Hall coming back to Broadway. Yeah. Broadway.com Audience Choice Award winner, Todrick Ooh. Hall. He's playing Ogie in Waitress. He's going to love you like a table. He starts August 20th, replacing Noah Galvin, who will play his final performance on August 18th. That's so exciting. Yeah. He's going to be great. He's he be he great. is great. And I love how much theater he does. He, he, you mm -hmm. know, he's really balancing. He's a Broadway guy. He and he's back. going to appear alongside Colleen Ballinger, a.k.a. Miranda Sings. We're doing a lot of AKAs Two YouTube today. stars. That's right. It's going to be YouTube sensation at Waitress, who will step into the role of Don also on August 20th. I'll take their... Broadway bows together, yes. Well, I had to look up because I wanted to get the name right. I'm oh. obsessed with Todrick's uh, new song, Nails, Hair, Hips, Heels. Highly recommend it. Great music video. Todrick <laughs> makes the best He's music He's so video. good. He's so good. He's so good. I hope he comes and sits in the seat. And Pretty Woman has a whole lot of exciting news coming out today. They had like a lot of news, they right? Had yeah, a lot they of just news. Okay, so first news. of all, they've added the song "Oh, Pretty Woman." I didn't realize there was an "O" on Did it. I? Did you? No, I don't. Roy Orbison's song, Roy you know, Orbison. "Pretty Woman." Oh yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. that's, yeah, that's pretty um, much. Uh, they added it to the show, so it's like in, the, and they put video. They of didn't Orfe. take out Rodeo Drive and put that in. No, but no. Orfe is at the Orfe and Eric Anderson are sort of taking the lead on it. There's video of that on our news story. You can check that out. That's now happening at the Nederlander Theater. Just sort of a little bonus to Brian Adams' score. Uh, and of course, the movie was named after that song. It came after the movie, uh, and there was a great video, right? There's footage, and then she like it was like a montage yeah. of her walking down the street. Mm -hmm. Anyway, you're looking at me like uh, I know. Also, I no Pretty Woman is playing London's West End in 2020. We don't know um, who will be in it, but Jerry Mitchell, you know, Legally Blonde didn't get nominated, did it, for Best Musical here? Am I supposed it, to? Know I these didn't, details? and then it went on to win. The Olivier, so I assume Pretty mm. Woman will win mm. the Olivier. Mm. Uh, okay. <laughs> because okay. you know, second chances. And the German production, which we already talked about, uh, which starts September 23rd in Hamburg, I hope we get plane tickets, will be starring Patricia Meaden and Mark Seibert. Uh, and so it, Pretty Woman is... is Taking over know, the world. It's, it's a brand name, and it's going to go everywhere. And we got some exciting Tick, Tick, Boom movie updates. Did I not tell you enough about Lin-Manuel Miranda today? There's more. 
We knew he was involved with Tick, Tick, Boom, the film property. It's becoming sort of his pet project. It's his pet project. It's his directorial debut. Yes. And in, in talks, eyeing the project, in talks, Andrew Garfield. What? I know. Tony winner Andrew Garfield? Uh, Tony, yes, that's the one. Uh, to play John, the role inspired by Jonathan Larson. Um, yeah, so this is being written by Stephen Levinson, who won a Tony Award for Dear Evan Hansen. And we'll see. It's now going to be on Netflix. Netflix. Right. So before, I feel like it was with another, another company. But now... But you don't know. Like, sometimes Netflix things still premiere in movie theaters. Mm -hmm. like, True. Like the Ryan Murphy you prom never, movie is supposed to premiere. So we don't know never. if it's direct to Netflix or just produced by Netflix. No. Correct. Yeah. It's, it's going to be good. So Tick, Tick, Boom is about turning 30? Is it 30? Yep. Uh, Jonathan yep. Larson is... 3090, 3090, because he's turning 30, 30 in, 1990. in 1990. Sorry. And it was, it was <laughs> Come a... Come to your senses, Beth. I love that show so much. It was a semi-autobiographical -autobi show, mm -hmm. and it was done in the early aughts. Mm -hmm. Am I allowed to say that? I With, hate that word. And it was turned into th a three-character piece, but it was originally a solo show about an mm -hmm. aspiring theater composer who is waiting tables in New York City while writing Superbia, which he hopes will be the next great American musical, and finally give him his big break. You know what song is from Superbia? Tell me. Come to your senses. Yes, I need I that. that song. There you go. Amy Spanger, original cast album. Check it out. <laughs> and a bunch of our Broadway faves are going to be seen on the big screen for a movie adaptation of a play. Well, Beth and I are big August Wilson yes, fans. Yes, we are. Fanatics. We always loved when there was a new August Wilson play, and that doesn't happen anymore. No. But we get on. fantastic revivals and uh, movie adaptations. So Ma Rainey's Black Bottom, which I believe Whoopi Goldberg starred in last time on Broadway. Mm -hmm. Yes, that? she did. Yes, Remember she did. that revival? Mm -hmm. It is now uh, becoming a film, and George C. Wolfe, one of our favorite directors, will be directing it, and it is adapted by Ruben Santiago Hudson, another wow, long this is an August all Wilson star collaborator. Has yeah. George Wolfe directed? Did a lot of August Wilson? No. I, I, not yeah. that I know. Not on Broadway. Interestingly, yeah. So, and he's a great film director too, by the way, uh, George C. Wolf. He's done this before. Denzel Washington, another August Wilson uh, collaborator, will produce the film with Netflix. You know, Netflix, Netflix. loves mm -hmm. Broadway, and we love Netflix. Let's put it. That I way. mean, come on, Netflix. I love you can, it. You can uh, quote me, Netflix. Even better, the cast will include Tony winner Viola Davis as uh, Ma Rainey, um, mm -hmm. along with. Colin Great Domingo, casting. Michael Potts of Broadway's The Prom. Congratulations, Michael Potts. Uh, Chadwick Boseman. Anyway. It's going to be great. It was August Wilson's first Broadway play in 1984, and it's set in a recording studio in the 20s, and it's about a blues singer, Ma Rainey, and she's going through it, and it's good. It's so good. And Viola Davis, of course, was in Fences yep. and was in King Hedley II. She's Wilson. done a lot of August yeah. Wilson, so she knows what she's doing. Excited. What else is on the site? Well. Beyonce. Beyonce. The category is Beyonce <laughs> posing with Nala of The Lion King. Why is she posing with Nala? That's so weird. Well, she's doing the voice of that little um, anime. What's it called? It's a live action. There's going to be a singing lion that sounds like Beyonce and The Lion King this summer. <laughs> That's right. So uh, anyway, she was with Cindy Winters, the Nala of L.A. Mm -hmm. And so we've got a great picture of that and Hadestown. This, I don't think this will surprise anyone. They won a special ensemble award. Um, it's an equity award. It's, the, it's a fantastic ensemble. Wonderful ensemble. Hades ensemble. They, don't have, they, they can dance and sing and swing lights. <laughs> like nobody's <laughs> business. And of course, we knew that beautiful Vanessa Carlton had a press event, and mm -hmm. we got to talk to her. You got to talk to her, yeah, Caitlin. Yeah, Super so fun. So that is on the site. Okay, I'm out of here because... I got a Jersey girl to talk to. House. Yes. yes. Caitlin, will you tell us about our guest, please? Gladly, yes. We have Olivia Valley here with us in the studio today. She's currently making her off-Broadway debut in Jersey Boys. Have you heard of it? Her name sounds familiar? Yes? Uh, she's the granddaughter of Four Seasons frontman Frankie Valley. She's playing the role based on her grandmother. We're keeping it in the family. She's previously appeared on the national touring production of Wicked, and she understudied Alpha Bus, so we know she's got a good voice. Make sure you follow her on Instagram, at Olivia F. Valley, and leave all of your questions in the comments below. Please welcome Olivia and Beth. Thank you, Caitlin. Welcome, Olivia. It's Hi nice there. to see you. Nice to see you, too. All right, first of all, you do have a ridiculous voice because I kind <laughs> of stalked you on Instagram and watched some of your, <laughs> your stuff. So, gorgeous voice. Thank you. And you would think that being the granddaughter of Frankie Valley, you would just call up and say, I want to be in Jersey Boys, and they'd be like, yeah, sure. But that's not <laughs> what happened, so tell us the story. Well, um, I've been auditioning for Jersey Boys for six years. Um, as Francine, never as Mary. Interesting. Um, and it was for the Broadway production, and then 
it just didn't work out. Um, uh, the girl playing Francine was one of three company members who started the whole production. Had been an original cast member. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, um, which was amazing for her. And so it, I thought it was not my door. And I was like, okay, that's fine. Um, so I auditioned for Wicked. <laughs> and that got worked it. Out. And that worked <laughs> out. <laughs> Booked it quite nicely. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then I was auditioning for Jersey Boys still on the road when um, I heard that it was um, going off Broadway. My agents called and they were like, Jersey Boys still would love to see you. And I sent in a tape for Francine and never heard back from them. What? <laughs> the Jersey Boys people need to get it together. <laughs> well, mm -hmm. I, I think it was meant to work out this way because I got back from tour um, and two months later got a call to audition as Mary. And it was wild. I was like, Mary? My my grandma? <laughs> Whoa. I was like, my aunt is fine, but I right. grew up with my nana. Right, right, right. So that was that one really hit close to home and I said, Okay, let's try this out. So let's talk about the deep research you did for this role. Did, <laughs> did you go into the archives? Did you talk to the family? Well, I grew up with my nana. So for me I But pulled... did she tell stories from her? Oh yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> she did. And she was a talker. She was a talker. <laughs> the women in my family, the people in my family were talkers. We're Loud Italians from New Jersey. So This is well documented. It's pretty right on brand. Um, <laughs> so we would talk about it when I was younger, and then when she passed, my mom and I would talk about it. And um, I was able to sit down with my mom when I got the sides and talk to her about some things. And a lot of it really resonated with me to begin with because I'm a lot like my grandma to begin with. Um, she's really tough, but it's to protect a really mushy interior and she's very sensitive and she loves deeply so for me going in for these scenes um and having a four-hour callback process what That's oh yeah <laughs> yes go on was <laughs> was challenging emotionally and um energy wise and staying focused but it felt the most organic for me to just tell that story through me through knowing her. Even if this weren't your family, you were so right for it, is what you're saying. <laughs> I like it. I like it. So at what point in this did you call Grandpa? I called mm -hmm. him after I booked it. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's very good, yeah. Um, he, my mom told him, you know, Olivia has an audition. He was like, great. And I called him after my callback, and he was like, I'm so happy for you. We'll see what happens. And I was oh. like, great. I can't wait. And I called my mom, and I did not think I got this. Um, you know, I covered Alphaba. Like then right. they, they were like, "Okay, now dance." And I was like, "Okay. <laughs> I'm scared." <laughs> so now what? Um, but 2 days later I got the call that I got it and I called my grandpa and he was over the moon and cried. We just cried on the phone. Has he come to see it yet? He has. Yeah. yeah. That must be nerve-wracking for the rest of the company. <laughs> Not to mention you. I Everybody played it really cool for me, in front of me. Mm -hmm. um, and they've all met him, and most well, of them have performed. He's always been very performed. involved with the Jersey Boys story and the musical, even though he didn't write it, of course. Exactly. But he was he seemed like he had a passion and a love for it. He really, he loves this show, and he's just so happy that it's still running. Um, Bob Gaudio came to see the show, because I'm very close with the Gaudios. And... We were all just over the moon and like <laughs> crying and like, I can't believe this finally happened because it's been so long. I was That's auditioning amazing. for a little bit. <laughs> How do you celebrate? How did you celebrate booking the show? Um, I, my mom, my brother and I went and got two pizzas and had cracked open a bottle of wine and just ate a bunch of pizza and ice cream. You are so cream. on brand. I'm <laughs> really to I the brand. I love this about you. <laughs> I love this about you. All right, let's talk about playing Alphaba. Yeah. Okay, you got to play the green girl. Oh yeah, a couple so times. Tell me about that. Um, it was the greatest experience I could ask for. It was my first professional job out of school. Wow. Yeah, I'm really lucky. <laughs> so Super which, lucky. which um, market, which venue were you in when you got to go on for the first time? I was at the Boston Opera House. Not shabby. Not, Not shabby. terrible, gotta say. And my <laughs> last performance of Elphaba was at the Pantages in Los Angeles, California. And your family got to see you. Yeah. What did you do? Call them up and be like, I'm on. Well, I called my grandpa and I knew a couple of days in advance and I was like, you know, 
saddle up, I'm going on. <laughs> <laughs> Frankie Valley saddled up. Yeah, and he saddled up with my uncles and with the rest of my family, and they watched me fly. That's amazing. It was so cool. Were you nervous? Um, I mean, are you nervous to perform in front of your family? No. That's good. I kind of, through Wicked, developed a fight or flight instinct because going on last minute after oh, yeah. being in the ensemble and like basically yelling over 20 people, um, <laughs> um, you know, you have to be ready for anything. So I would get a call like an hour and a half before the show and be like, you're on. And I said, okay, let's do it. And I just kind of like eliminated any possible chance of fear and turned it into um, a way to tell an honest story and to stay focused. Now, let's talk about your background a little bit because mm -hmm. your father was involved with the Four Seasons. Is that correct? Am I getting this right? Yes. Tell me the story because I don't really know it, but I, I know a little bit. So tell me My how he's involved. My dad um, was the drummer uh, to the Four Seasons. And that's how he met my mom. And that's... How I came to be. That's how it all came out. <laughs> so you were like a real Four Seasons baby. Yeah, kind or, of. Or brand baby. <laughs> Basically. So did you always know you wanted to perform? Obviously, you have the pipes. Thank mm -hmm. you. Um, I did. I was, before I could talk, my mom, it's funny, she's tone deaf. Um, what? <laughs> Outing your mother. <laughs> which is insane, but she's like the best dancer I've ever seen in my life. So if it couldn't come out one way, it came out there another way. Um, but my mom would sing to me, and before I could form words, I would hum to her the correct melody in the correct <laughs> key. Wow. Okay. <laughs> you were like, that's not quite it. I was it. like, this is strong and wrong. Love you, <laughs> but here's how it goes. Um, and so uh, I've always knew I wanted to perform, but I got into theater super late. I was a junior in high school, and everyone was picking colleges, and I said, okay, well... I like to sing, theater sounds fun, and I like to <laughs> act, so that seems like a lot of fun too. And I went to school at Montclair State University, so like truly still Stayed in on the brand yeah, there. <laughs> as a Jersey girl, <laughs> um, and graduated with a BFA in musical theater. Do you remember the first time you saw Jersey Boys? Yeah, it was two weeks after opening, and... And you must have been a, a kid. I was a kid. Like, I don't even remember how old I was. It was that long ago. And so I was just so blown away by the fluidity of the show, like how it's so well done. Everything is so seamless. Um, my favorite thing that I'll always remember is Dawn, when the seasons face away from the audience and you see the backstage rush. Because mm -hmm. it's so like being in a theater, being in a concert, performing anywhere, doing even this, like that rush of all the people backstage making it happen mm -hmm. for that finalized product. Oh, that must have been amazing. And was what great. was your family's reaction to Jersey Boys? Oh, we all just were like, <sighs> <laughs> what is this? This is amazing. <laughs> and just like, I was crying. My mom was crying, especially during the Francine parts, because that's my mom's sister. Yeah. Um, and she um, lost her at 22. So that was a really emotional moment for all of us because I never knew my aunt, but I know the pain that my mom felt mm -hmm. and the pain that my grandpa felt as well. So kind of watching them go through that, like, you know, mm -hmm. you absorb You sort of like really pain. get to feel what it's like because it's such an emotional experience watching yeah. it. How weird and surreal is it for you as Mary Delgado to fall in love with Frankie Valli every night. You know, it was really weird at first. I called, when I called my grandpa, I was like, I'm playing your ex-wife. <laughs> <laughs> and then like we got really sentimental and then got like really serious and cried. Um, but he's I, a mushy guy. He's, we're just all big, mushy big people. people yeah. yeah, we just <laughs> love people and love. Like we just can't help it. Um, but at first I was like, okay, I'm gonna go kiss my grandpa now. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and I think now, like, because... Um, it's not her actual grandfather. Just, I just want no, you to it's, know. No, I'm not kissing my grandpa in real life every day. That's, that'd be weird. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, because I know everybody now, and uh, Aaron De Jesus, who plays Frankie right now, um, he's so wonderful and so welcoming. Now I'm like, oh, I'm playing with Aaron. Great. Good. Yeah. Or little, any of the understudies removed. that go on. Like, I'm like, oh, okay, great. So you've been in it for a month now, is that right? One month to the day. Happy anniversary. Thank you. So are, are you feel like you're, you're in it now, you're settled in. Yeah. You've got the, you've got the rhythm of it. Yeah. I, I was, I'm 
definitely a workhorse in a way where like I want to make sure it's as good as it can be opening night so I can have that sense of flow and not worry about it. Mm -hmm. um, so about like a half of the weekend, I was like, oh, okay, this isn't terrible, you know, maybe a mishap or two, but no one died. Good. So that was great. Excellent. Was <laughs> no good. one died. And so now I definitely have a flow. Um, but I always like to get to my spot early to begin with, just in case, because it's so fast paced anyway that I'm like, I'm not missing a single thing. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> All right, well, I know the people out there yes. on the internet have questions. You got a whole lot. So, Caitlin, yes. let us know what they're saying. So, Alexandra, her question is Is there anything special you do to get into character every day? Um. It's kind of an, an in the moment thing. Like the minute I put that costume on, I'm like, oh, I'm here. That pizza dress, I'm like, I've arrived. My, my grandma's arrived. We are ready to party. And so I go in with the intention of capturing what I remember from her, which is her wit, um, her strength, mm -hmm. her, the, the ability to have an open heart to fall in love with Frankie um, so quickly and have that be a true love kind of moment. So that's kind of like it's a in the moment rush kind of way to prepare. <laughs> Do you have anything from her in your dressing room? Um, not in the dressing room because what I have from her is um, two pieces of jewelry mm -hmm. um, that she gave to me before she passed. So I keep that in my room. But I have like pictures and stuff that I'm now that I'm settling. Yeah, <laughs> still you can like, move in a little bit. Move, uh, now that I'm like oh, okay, I'm not fired yet. Great. <laughs> No one's dead. Um, <laughs> awesome. I can like, I'm going to have like pictures set up and just little things here and And you're there. not treated like the boss's daughter, so to speak. No, no. Not if you have this kind of callback and audition process. No, which is what I, I've always gone into every room being like, I'm Olivia Valley. Like mm -hmm. I am who I am. And my grandpa is my grandpa, not my meal ticket. Yeah. It's a cool coincidence, but I, I've worked hard and I continue to work hard. So please don't treat me any different. I love that you said that because you definitely give that sense and I wanted to make, Thank you. I wanted to hear it. I appreciate okay, we have more that. questions. I yes. know. You're scrolling around there. Yes, I am. Okay, so Alec wants to know what has been the biggest surprise that you've learned while doing this show? And has there been anything like surprising? Um, I didn't know I could dance until now. Um, that's <laughs> definitely a surprise. Um, and I guess the surprise is how to figure out Mary's arc while playing different characters, like an angel or like, um, a, I don't like the term hooker, but you know, that's what There are other roles. There are other, other roles. Female ensemble um, roles. A, a yeah. sex worker. Okay, that's, um, that's, that's fair. Woman, a pretty woman, yes. Woman. Um, Thank you, Paul. <laughs> um, and you know, or just like a girl at the bar. And so I think for me, figuring out her arc while putting a million other things in the middle was my biggest surprise. But, um, and while still keeping that really genuine and honest every night and not getting swept up in was my biggest surprise. I like mm -hmm. it. Thanks. So we'll do one last question. And Peyton wants to know, how do you deal with nerves? Oh, that's <laughs> This must go back to the wicked days. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it kind of yeah. does. Um, I. I am personally a weirdo and I do well under pressure hmm. because of the experience I had with um, Elphaba. That doesn't mean I don't get nervous. How you know I'm nervous is my hands are like trembling but everything's like really calm and I'll just kind of like hide my hands and I'm like, all right, no one knows except right, me. Right. Um, <laughs> but I think the best way to handle nerves is to trust yourself and the work you've put in um, and know that just because there are people there does not mean it changes the show. It's just that there's people there to finally watch how hard you've worked. And if that's hard to um, imagine, imagine that you are in a rehearsal. I love that. Love that. Olivia, thank you thank for coming you. on Live at Five. Guys, have you seen Jersey Boys? Have you seen Olivia Valley play her grandmother <laughs> in Jersey Boys? We all need to go back. I'm yeah. very excited to do that. Thank you so much thank for coming. Thank you for having me. Caitlin, will you take us on in? Yes. Thank you guys so much for tuning in today. We are live at 5 every single weekday here on Facebook. You can listen to us wherever you get your podcast by searching for hashtag live at 5 and hitting that subscribe button. Be sure to tune in tomorrow when we talk to Leslie Kritzer of Beetlejuice.